Welcome to the second video on how to operate a uh, mission planner. Um, this will just be a quick guide on what the different pages do and it will also show you how to set up a few waypoints, upload them to the autopilot uh, and get started with a simple flight. The first thing you want to do uh, is ensure that the firmware is up to date. Um, you can do that by clicking on the hardware tab and that will bring up uh, the different firmwares available. Uh, in this case we're using a, a fixed wing aircraft so we'll be updating with the Argeplane firmware. Uh, this time I won't actually upload it because I know I've got the correct one on there. Um, it's important in this step that you choose the correct COM port. Uh, if you're plugged in by USB it's the one shown here otherwise it's whatever COM port you uh, have on your modem or your serial to USB converter. Uh, this is the flight planning screen. Uh, this is where you put in all of your waypoints. Um, longitude and latitude are shown. Um, there's a few tools here. You can skip to different longitudes and latitudes, uh, various other things. Um, worth having a look through. Uh, it's worth familiarizing yourself with, uh, with all those options. Uh, to set a waypoint, just click anywhere on the screen. Um, you can move it around with the mouse. If you want to modify uh, the waypoint, you can open this little screen here, just move this out of the way, and it'll show you a waypoint. Um, up the top, you can change the waypoint radius, that's that white dotted line that goes around the waypoint. You can also change the loiter radius, um, so these are just the radiuses the aircraft will follow when it goes around the waypoints. When it reaches the waypoint, it'll execute a command, and you can choose that command. Generally, it's good just to leave it on waypoint. But if you want the aircraft to limit uh, to um, loiter or something like that, that's what you do. You can add a custom waypoint where you input the latitude, longitude and altitude manually, um, but it's much easier just to click on the screen. Alright, so uh, a few things to note here. Absolute altitude, uh, I would recommend never touching that. Um, that will give your altitude in uh, absolute meters above sea level. Um, and that can have problems if you're in hilly terrain or if you're up quite high. So leave that one alone in general. Uh, verify height is a good one to have on because it uh, allows your aircraft to follow the, um, the hills and the troughs in the land. It will change the altitude as it flies along. Um, and RTL at default altitude should stay on. That is, uh, of course, the altitude that your aircraft ref returns to launch at. Um, the default altitude is uh, set at 90. If you want to stay within CASA's regulations, it has to be under 300 feet. Otherwise, you can set that to whatever you like. Uh, it's not advised to set it under 30 meters, though, because these things can lose altitude quickly if it does go wrong. All right, so now we want to upload the waypoints. So connect to your uh, device. If it's plugged in by USB, um, select Auto or just select the COM port it's on and press Connect and then press wa uh, right waypoints. It's very fast and uh, that's already done. Um, now we can uh, have a quick look at the flight data screen. Um, but first, uh, quickly, um, one feature this does offer is geocaching. Um, if you right click and go down to the map tool, it's the uh, it's a prefetch on the map tool um, and that will uh, basically just load any of the map onto your hard drive so when you go out of range of the internet you can still see the map. Alright so to start the mission you select mission start and press do action. That'll go to waypoint one first and engage auto mode. Uh, you can select any mode here that's listed. Um, manual mode is of course uh, the mode that the pilot uses. Um, so what we're going to go through here is uh, uh, configuring the radio so before you can fly you need to configure the radio in Mission Planner. To do that you need to connect the radio to a receiver, connect the receiver to your autopilot. Uh, this isn't detailed in this video but um, you should know how to do that. Uh, to calibrate you just press the calibrate button and press OK provided your transmitter set up fine. Um, all you have to do is uh, move all the control services around 
and uh, also switch the radio button back and forward. Um, as you can see here we've got some mixing, we want to turn that off, so just give us a second. Okay, so now as you can see, moving roll, pitch, yaw, throttle, uh, up and down, and I'm now selecting my auxiliary switch, that will move radio 8 back and forward. I've still got a little bit of mixing there, but we're going to ignore that for now. So the radio 8 um, is one of the important ones for the safety pilot. It switches between modes in the autopilot itself. So what we want to do now is select the modes that the pilot can switch between. And to do that, we click on flight modes. Now, you can toggle that sw same switch again, and it'll jump between manual and manual here. So that's not much use to us, so we want to change the second flight mode to auto or stabilize mode or anything that you want to do. Uh, if you have a multiple point switch you can of course select more than one flight mode. Uh, we usually operate just two for safety purposes. All the other modes can be selected in Mission Planner by the console operator and as you can see now we're switching between auto and manual. Back in the main screen um, we'll just move the autopilot around a bit to show what the reaction is. Uh, we're in auto mode at the moment. Um, we can manually select manual. Um, and now if you flick the switch, uh, it goes between auto and manual without having to uh, manually select it in the console. So that's very useful. Um, so basically now standard configurations are uploaded onto uh, Mission Planner. Um, but there are some extra things that we can do before we fly. The first one is to have a look at the modem settings. Um, so basically you need to disconnect first, load those up, you can change the board rate and things like that as long as the modem's a 3DR modem, uh, this will work, otherwise it won't. Um, I won't go into too many details with that. Um, so we'll reconnect the modem and we'll have a quick look at some of the parameters you can set. So all we have to do now is um, have a look at the battery monitor, we can enable that if you've got a, um, a power module, it's highly recommended to buy one. Um, select the 3DR power module at the bottom and again select 3DR power module and that will give you the uh, real-time current and voltage data which is invaluable when uh, flying around uh, it's good for battery management and that sort of thing um, alright so there's a few other options here airspeed um, you can have that enabled if you've got a pedo on or disable it if you don't um, alright so now we're going to click the software tab um, this sometimes takes a little while to load, uh, sometimes it also gets frozen, uh, but it's going to come up here. So we've got advanced parameters. Um, if you're not sure of what these things mean, I'd recommend not changing them. Um, what we're going to do here is load a pre-configured file. You can download these from the Mission Planner website. Um, standard aircraft like the Bixler, there'll be parameter files for. These are ones that other people have made. This one's for an X5 flying wing. Um, so all those parameters are that it's changed come up in green um, and uh, so that's basically what happens there. Um, these advanced parameters um, I'd advise not really touching unless you actually do some research into what they mean. They can be useful for uh, advanced um, operations but they're not a whole lot of use for people who just want to do uh, simple autonomous navigation. Okay so the geofence, uh, nothing there really important. Fail safe uh, you can set a throttle or a basically a current limit so that if the throttle goes below a certain level it cuts out. Um, this is uh, basically in case the motor gets damaged or something and stops drawing current. Alright, so standard parameters. There's a few things in here that will make a bit more sense to anyone who's familiar with model aircraft, um, but again, uh, not really necessary to change many of these unless uh, you specifically need something done. Um, PIDs, again, if you don't know what a PID is, uh, don't play with these, uh, but they are very useful in um, getting the aircraft to operate better in high wind. So I'm just going to open up hardware tab here again for a second, just to show you um, the reverse buttons on the uh, radio calibration and the Elevon configuration for flying wings. Um, when you use stabilize mode, which is um, basically keeps the aircraft dead level but allows manual control, um, you'll be able to basically test on the ground what the uh, deflections of the control surfaces do. Um, 
and that screen that was just shown is uh, you tick those boxes to make sure that the deflections are correct before you launch. Um, this will show you how to go into st stability mode. Um, so you set that mode, it comes up. Make sure the engine's unplugged um, before you do this. Just move the aircraft around a bit and see how the uh, the control surfaces behave. Um, there's more info on that in our training manual, um, but if you're just watching this, uh, look up what stability mode is on uh, the DIY Drones website and familiar yourself, familiarise yourself with the stability mode test. Um, it saved us a lot of uh, headache in the past in preventing crashes from happening where the control deflection has been incorrect. Um, uh, then all you have to do is check your manual control deflections and you're ready.